All right. Now, this woman, she's an African woman who's teaching. I think she's teaching in Philadelphia. She made this comment about Kevin Samuels. She said, Kevin Samuels told men their worth was in their wallet. He died in a one-bedroom sublet with less than $1,000 to his name. No partner, no, no partner, friend, or offspring willing to claim him. Only his poor mother begging and borrowing to bury his loathsome carcass. And she saw, her source was media takeout. Okay. Now, let me, let me go into this real quick. Now, number one, this is a lie. She's using media takeout as a damn source. Media takeout is a known um, lying ass um, publication. They make up stuff as they go along. It's run by a Ugandan African dude who has made money off exploiting foundational black Americans, by the way. That's another thing, another reason why y'all owe. A lot of y'all come over here and start up these damn gossip sites where you exploit and lie on foundational black Americans every single day. And y'all make money doing it with media takeout, non-FBA, Shade Room, non-FBA, World Star, non-FBA, um, Madame Noir, non-FBA, Bossip, non-FBA, Sandra Rose, non-FBA. Y'all sit up here with all these gossip sites, almost every single top gossip site that spreads this degenerate information about foundational black Americans are all run by immigrants, all of them. And they make money promoting degenerate ass behavior about us. That's another reason why you owe. Y'all sit up here and promote negative propaganda about foundational black Americans. And y'all sit up here promoting lies left and right. Y'all lie all the time. Y'all sit up here and just lie through your damn teeth. You understand? You lie through your damn teeth. Every damn gossip site is run by a damn immigrant who put up filth about us every day. We got to start calling that out. Kevin Samuels did not have no damn thousand dollars. All right? That man had millions of followers on, on YouTube. The revenue from YouTube alone had to be worth at least 50000 a month. Just the revenue off YouTube. Forget all the other branding that he did. Just the YouTube rev um, 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 revenue had to be over five fifty thousand a month. Had to be. You dig? Yeah, Mona Scott, all that love and hip hop stuff. Every degenerate type of behavior you see on TV is run by non-FBA people. All right. So let's be clear. That man didn't just have have a thousand dollars to his name. Let's stop that. Yeah, and yeah, there's a lot of defamation. I know um, the family's representative, Brother Dennis, you know, he's calling out a lot of the misrepresentation. Um, and RIP to Brother Kevin Samuels. And let's go back to that professor. That professor was talking about his dead carcass and all of that stuff. Let's stop. Because let me tell you something. They'll sit up here and talk about how... Kevin Samuels said stuff. Oh, he hated on sisters and all that stuff. He said stuff that we didn't like. Oh, he deserved to die. But then they had Chet Hanks. I saw them interview Chet Hanks. Now, Chet Hanks did an interview with some foreign lady, foreign, some F9 FBA woman, and she asked him about all of that fake Jamaican accent. And he was like, yeah, I ain't going to apologize. I didn't do anything wrong. And all of the Jamaican flags and all the Caribbean flag wa wavers were sitting up here. Oh, yeah, we love him. Oh, we love Chet Hanks. Oh, we love him. Chet Hanks didn't do nothing wrong. So Chet Hanks, remember, Chet Hanks beat up his black girlfriend, called her all types of ghetto black bitches. He runs around here with a fake patois accent. And y'all non-FBA tethers sit up here and eat that nonsense up. Y'all sit up here and eat that nonsense up when it's Chet Hanks. But Kevin Samuels, oh, he deserved to rot in hell. Give me a break. Oh, Kevin Samuels had unrealistic body um, identities for black women and all that. Oh, he gave black men unrealistic body expectations for black women. Stop it. If you want to see unrealistic body expectations, look at how white men treat white women. If a white woman gains 10 pounds, they're throwing her ass in the trash. All right. You want to see the the weight and beauty standards they have for white women? 
white men's beauty standards are on a whole different level. Y'all remember Jessica Simpson, boy, remember when she got a, just a little thick? Boy, they threw her ass. They had headlines about her ass. See, white supremacist society, they are the ones who promote overweight black women. The overweight black women image comes from white society, the promotion of that, because that's a running joke with white society. This is what y'all don't understand. White society did this prank on black society by promoting overweight black women. That's been an inside joke with white supremacist society, going all the way back to Venus Hottentot, promoting this woman with a big ass and stomach and all that. That was something that they promoted as a joke. Read my book, Foundation of Black American Race Beta. I talk about how they promote black women like that, almost as an animal, as a joke. That's why they promote Lizzo and all of that stuff and act like that's body positivity and you fall for it. That's a prank that they playing on y'all, man. Back in the day, we understood the prank. At one point during Jim Crow, the white supremacists were going to try to put mammy statues all around the country. It was the black press that said, no, we ain't going for that. You're not going to put up images of overweight black women all around the country because we know that's an insult. So the image of the overweight black woman that they press in the media, as if that's some type of positive, white society does that as a joke. And y'all still have not caught on to the damn joke. You still hadn't caught on to the damn joke, man. Because they don't play that when it comes to white women. The minute white women gain weight, you see how they feel about overweight women. They throw white women out the, out the, out the door. But going back to this professor, and I ain't going to be on too long because I got to rest my voice, ladies and gentlemen. Now, going back to this professor, now, this professor, Uju Anaya, university professor, anti-racist, equity-minded, feminist. She got LGBT flags. They say she teaches in Pittsburgh somewhere. Okay, I wonder what FBA students are going to her class. Now, this woman is supposed to be a professor in Pittsburgh somewhere, Pennsylvania somewhere. Now, she's supposed to be a professor. Now, I want y'all to look at this, guys. This professor here, hold on. This professor here, I want to show y'all something about this professor. This is why I say these folks can't be around us trying to teach us. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is what this professor thinks about us. This is the same professor talking about, no shade, sis, a kata need to quit with these assumptions that their blackness is the only one alive in the Americas. Mexico has a large, thriving black population. Okay, so she's calling us Akatas. Here's another time she's calling some, she's showing these foundational black American girls. I thought this was the year of the return. Nepa couldn't bring small light even for Akata. So she calls us Akatas like it's nothing. This woman refers to us as Akatas, ladies and gentlemen. 